Hello and welcome to another Autodesk tutorial video and in this video we're going to look at how to create structural reinforcement inside of a column, a slab or a beam. I'm currently inside the workspace of Autodesk Revit 2025. Now if you're using a different version of Revit most of this might be very easy for you but if you're using Revit 2025 you're going to need to pay attention to your project browser and know that if you're creating a structural element it's not going to appear inside the floor plan it's going to appear inside the structural plan. So what I'm going to do here is to switch from the L1 architectural plan. I'm just going to look for the structural plan inside the project browser down here. I can see structural, so I can just go ahead and select this button down. And L1 structural, I'm just going to switch to that. So now that we're inside the L1 structure, I can go ahead and create a column. And just a very simple column, 450 by 600 millimeters. I'm using a concrete column because that's where we actually go ahead to input rebars and reinforcements so i'm just going to go ahead and put the column place it somewhere and i'm going to go for a say an isolated footing for example just going to go ahead and select this isolated footing you can use your scroll wheel mouse actually zoom in and go ahead and select the center of this column and place our footing now that we have our footing and a column we can go ahead and create a section for this view and inside of here you can find section at the top corner here just beside the mini house where is a 3d view go ahead and select the section it looks like an eye so you can create a section that cuts across the very center of this column like this. And once you have your section in place, you can find it in the project browser. Scroll for the section of views. We have sections here under working section. We can go ahead and select one. That gives us one of the sections. We can see here the column and the footing that we wanted to create. So to, in order for us to create a rebar, first we're going to go to the structure tab and then you can see under reinforcement, you can see rebar area reinforcement. This is usually for slabs. You can see a path where you can sketch a path for a reinforcement. There's also fabric reinforcements, sheets, cover, setting the cover for a reinforcement and of course the rebar couplers. We're just going to stick to the basic one now. Go ahead and select structural rebar. Once you go ahead and check this option, Revit is going to ask you, Revit is going to ask you, you need to define some parameters for your reinforcement. That's fine. You can do this inside the options menu. Go ahead and click OK. Once you're here, you can scroll through the rebar shape browser. For now, I'm going to just find one of the stirrups or a cage rebar. I'm just going to go ahead and select this MT1, for example. And you can go over to the column or the footing that you want to go ahead and place your reinforcement you notice that the cursor is currently showing you that you can't actually place anything there this happens often currently the default is set to maybe current work plane but the current work plane is not within this structural element so we have to actually change that what you can do in this sense is to choose either your near cover reinforcement or your far cover reinforcement i'm just going to go ahead and select the near the cover reinforcement i'm going to go back into the structural element now you can see that we can now choose where we want to place that reinforcement so i can just go ahead and click ok and Revit is going to actually place a reinforcement at that particular position. Now, if we head over to a 3D view and then maybe just press escape and then change to wireframe, you can see that the rebar is actually inside of the column. So there is the current reinforcement that we go ahead to add. You can go ahead and select this reinforcement and see which other options that you have. Once you go ahead and select the reinforcement, you can see other options pop up. You can choose to have just one single reinforcement or you can choose to add it by fixed number or maximum spacing. I'm just going to go ahead and say maximum spacing between the reinforcements. And you can see that Revit actually goes ahead to apply all of the reinforcement bars in there. I'm just going to change this from 100 to let's see 300 spacing. Once you go ahead and do that, click press enter and Revit is going to go ahead and apply those reinforcements by the spacing of 300. So you can see what that actually looks like. You have a slider up here as well. You can go ahead and pull it down and it's going to reduce the number and still maintain the spacing that it needs to be there. This just allows you to have more control over your reinforcement the way you place it inside a column, for example. So next, I want to create a reinforcement using a sketch method. We're going to create a reinforcement for this footing over here. So what we want to do first is to go ahead to rebar, structural rebar, go ahead and select that. And then you can see the sketch. Sometimes you have to be very careful about what you do here. I'm just going to go ahead and select sketch. And the first thing you want to do is Revit is going to ask you to pick a host for where you want to sketch your rebar. What I'm going to do first is to select the footing itself. Now, once you select the host, before you start drawing, we have to actually set the work plane. So go ahead to work plane settings and go ahead and click set work plane. We're going to go ahead and say pick a plane. So now you want to pick one of the faces of the reinforcement like this. And Revit is going to now show you how you can go ahead and sketch that work plane. Currently, if you use the cube, it shows you that that's the south elevation or the south view. So you can go ahead and look for the south elevation inside of the elevations to have us to, to give us a clear view. Now that we have the south elevation, we can go ahead and sketch the rebar. So you can see the cover settings as well. I'm going to use a line tool to actually guide me here to do this. 
I can go ahead and draw the rebar here. Pick it from this point, just using rough sketch to actually sketch my rebar. I can select this point, come all the way here. And make sure it's close to the cover. Try and match this other one and then my inside. So now that we have our sketch, it's not so perfect per se, but it'll do for now because of the tutorial. So go ahead and click accept. So once you go ahead and accept, you can see that we have our rebar sketch in place. So if you go over to 3D, you can see our rebar is currently inside of the structure. So before we go ahead and select another one, just like we did for the normal rebar that we went on to place, you can select this and of course change it from single to maximum spacing as well. I can go ahead and select maximum spacing and for this one I'm going to show you something here. I'm going to go ahead and select maybe 150 spacing and then press enter. And Revit is going to just place that but you're going to notice a problem here. Most of the rebar is actually sticking out of the concrete but that's not what we want. So basically this shape of rebar, this shape of rebar we only use it in the center where it's closer to the column and where it connects. So we can actually go ahead and change the spacing of this one. Go ahead and select this and then pull them closer together. Let's just use the east elevation to do this. And go to this point and drag the slider this way. Go ahead and drag this other slider this way. So we have basically the reinforcement that's going to go through that part of the column. And we can go ahead and create another one that can just span through this place. But this is basically how you go ahead and create and sketch reinforcements. The one more thing we need to look at now is how to create a, what I would like to call a structural area reinforcement. You do this for slabs. So we're just going to go ahead and create a slab. I can go back to L1 structural. And over here, we're going to create a floor. On that structural floor, you go ahead and select floor. And on that floor, you can use the generic 300 for this experiment and go ahead and just select the rectangle tool and then just create a floor. That floor is 300 by 400. So you go back to structural tools. Oops, I didn't actually complete my floor. I'm going to take the green and then yes, we have our floor set in place. We can go over to structure, select area for area reinforcement. Once you do that, Revit is going to ask you again to pick the structure that you want. And then I'm going to just select this 300 mm floor. Once you have that in place, you can first of all choose the rebar line. This asks Revit to sketch a closed boundary for where you want your rebar to be. This is almost like following the cover setting. So go ahead and choose a rectangle here like this. Once you have, it's like almost like creating a floor. So we have our rectangle in place. Choose the major direction. I want the major direction to be from this point all the way down to this other point. So once that's done, you can go over to the properties panel and check other settings. You can see maximum spacing, how you want your rebar to be, either you want it to be fixed number. I'm going to leave it to maximum settings, additional top cover. I'm just going to set this to maybe 40 and another one for the additional bottom cover of 40 as well. That's 40 millimeters, by the way. So you can see other settings here, major direction, minor direction, major spacing, 300. I'm just going to set this to 250. Just to show you that there are other settings, you can actually go ahead and input. You can see major bar type 16. I'm going to change it from 16 to 13. Now go ahead and hit apply. Once that's done, you can go ahead and select the finish edit mode and Revit is going to create the reinforcement bars alongside with their tag. So you can see that we have 13 for top reinforcement and 16 mm for the other reinforcements. So that is how you can go about creating reinforcements inside of Revit. It's a rough tutorial, it's a very quick tutorial, but I hope this helps. You can see the floor slab here and the reinforcements inside of the floor slab and inside of your south elevation as well. You can change to a wireframe mode to actually go ahead and see it. If you're on hidden line, you may not see the reinforcement. So you can go ahead to wireframe and then you can see the reinforcement for the slabs, just like we went ahead to select them. You can go ahead and select it and also edit the bars if you want. That's also something Revit allows you to do. You can select this one and modify the properties of the bars over here and then make changes to your reinforcement and also click apply when you are done. And if you found this video useful, do leave a like on it. And for more Revit tutorials like this, you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel and stay up to date with more videos coming soon. Thanks for watching.